Hi everyone, my name is Brad and welcome to the BI Consulting Services channel. Today we'll be taking a look at how you can build a universal calendar table right within your Power BI dashboard just using DAX. Now this is going to be helpful when you have different tables within your dashboard that each have their own date fields that don't perfectly align and your date slicer or your date filter isn't functioning quite the way you expect it to. So let's get right into it. For this dashboard, I've created two sample data sets to just serve as examples. So we have our email campaign data set here, and I just made these email sends as an example of a campaign you might see for an e-commerce site where a set of users added items to their cart but never continued on with their purchases. So we have our subject lines, our send dates, the number of emails that were sent, number delivered, our opens and our clicks as well. So uh, pretty straightforward stuff. This other table is purchase data that I've pulled from our pretend and very user-friendly back-end e-commerce site. So we have some product names here in this column, uh, the date the sale occurred, product quantity in the sale, and of course the total amount of the transaction. Now let's say our stakeholders are curious about the metrics from the email campaigns uh, as well as whether they were successful in actually motivating these customers to follow through on their purchases. Uh, a good way to approach this would be to build out some visualizations around the email campaigns and the sales da data, which I've already done here. Uh, and we also have our date slicer to control the time period of the data displaying. Uh, we've got some KPI cards over here. Uh, just displaying the total revenue during the time period uh, as well as sales by different product type here. Uh, we also have a table of email campaign data and of course our line chart here that maps out sales over time. Now let's also say that our stakeholders are going to want to adjust the dates on these visualizations to drill into time periods between email campaigns, which we can do with our date slicer, but which date field should we use for this? Uh, so if we use send date from our email table in our date slicer and we start adjusting the slicer here, you're going to notice that only the email data table over here is adjusting. Our sales tracker table and our KPI cards over to the side here uh, aren't adjusting to reflect the time period from the date slicer. So it doesn't look like send date is going to work for us in this case. So let's get rid of send date and maybe we'll try sale date on our sales table. So if we plug that in and start adjusting the slicer, you're going to notice that now the sales tracker data is adjusting and the KPI cards are adjusting as well, but our email table over here is not adjusting to reflect the selections on the date slicer. So it doesn't look like sale date is really gonna work for us uh, here either. And I do wanna say this functionality uh, might be okay with your stakeholders, but I'm gonna show you a solution that will allow the date slicer to manipulate all of your visuals. So let's go ahead and head over to our data view. Okay, so to begin, we're going to go up into our ribbon here and just select new table. And for this first column here, we are going to utilize the calendar function within DAX. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to go ahead and name this column calendar, and then we'll call our calendar function here. So our parameters are start date and end date. Uh, with start date for this, I'm going to go with um, just the first of this year, so January 1st, 2023. And then for the end date, since we want this to uh, automatically update as each day passes by, we're going to use the today function. And after we do that, you'll see that the column populates uh, beginning with January 1st, 2023. And since today is February 28th, we should see that as the last day in the column. And there we have it. All right, so the next column that we'll create, uh, we'll create a column that pulls out or extracts the year. Um, the current year in this uh, in this date column. So let's go ahead and add, go ahead and add a new column, and we're going to call this one year. 
and we will call the year function. And then we're just going to reference the date column uh, within this table. So we hit enter, and now we have uh, the date populating this column, uh, referencing the date column over here. Our next column, uh, we're going to create uh, a column that returns the number of the month of the year. So January would be one, February would be two, March three, so on and so on. So we'll go ahead and create a new column. And I'm just going to name this column month n for month number. And we're going to utilize the month function. <clears throat> and again, we're just going to uh, reference the first column that we created. Date. Perfect. All right, so we see that populate. Uh, we have ones down here for January, and we should see twos in February. And looks like that's what we have. All right, so for our next column, uh, we're actually going to create a column that just returns um, today's date. Let's go ahead and create that. Oop. Call this today. I'm going to just use the today function. All right, perfect. So we've got that in. So we've got uh, really a running um, date counter over here. Not, not a counter, but um, populating values <clears throat> for each calendar day as um, the calendar progresses. We have the year that references that column. We have the number of the month that references it. And then we also have um, this kind of handy column over here that uh, provides us with today's date. All right, so next we're going to create uh, another column for month, but we are going to um, pull the full name of the month while referencing this date column over here. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, this one, this column, I'm going to name uh, month name. And we need to format calendar day, calendar date. And the format we're going to use um, is MMMM. -M -M. So that's going to return the full name. Uh, of the month. We should see that populate here. Perfect. So we've got full name of January for January and full name of February for February. All right, so now the next column we'll create um, is uh, a weekday that's going to give us the first three letters of the day of the week uh, while referencing this date column. So let's do that. We'll call this one weekday. Need to format this. Reference the date column, and this will pull in the first three days. So perfect. All right, and just to double check, today is indeed Tuesday. So February twenty eighth is a Tuesday. Perfect. All right. So next we are going to create um, another column for week but we want to pull the uh, number of the week in the year. So you know, between, between one and 52, um, that's what we're looking at here. So go ahead and create a new column. And I'm going to call this week num. And that's actually the function that we're going to use. And we are going to reference the calendar date again. And then we're just going to use a one in our return type. So perfect. Uh, the one there just uh, designates that the week containing January 1st will be considered the first week of the year. So that's why we uh, put that in here. Okay, perfect. So we're going to do something similar, but uh, we're going to do it for the day, the number of the day of the year, as opposed to the week. So let's add another column. And we'll go ahead and call this one day. Now. I'm going to call the weekday function and use calendar date and our return type. Uh, we're going to set as two. I'll show you why in a minute here. So if we use two, uh, that's going to designate Monday as our first day of the week, um, which is what 
I want it to do if you uh, want Sunday to be the first day of the week, be considered the first day of the week, you can just use a one in here instead of a two. Um, but uh, I wanted Monday to be designated the first, so that's why I used two. All right, so uh, that's it for our um, calendar table build. So next we'll go over to the table relationships and establish those. Okay, perfect. So uh, we have our calendar table built and it's dynamic. So as, um, as the calendar progresses uh, in real time, our date, uh, every single one of these columns will add in a new record for the next subsequent day. So tomorrow on March 1st, if you come in, if you were to come in to um, this date table, you would see March 1st populate down here and uh, all the other columns would populate appropriately as well. So let's move our calendar table over here. We have our email and our sales tables over here. And now we want to establish the connections uh, based on date. So I'm gonna choose date and calendar and connect that to send date in email. And I'm gonna make sure this is a one to many. and this should be single. Right. All right, and we'll do the same thing for our connection to the sales table. So we're going to sale, uh, sale date, and we have our one-to-many connection. Uh, that's uh, one direction, so that's what we wanted. All right, so next we'll head back over to the visualizations, and we'll see how the new slicer functions. Okay, so we need to update our date slicer over here. Uh, previously, we were using sale date to populate. We're actually going to get rid of that. And we're now going to use date from our calendar table. And one thing to point out here, uh, you see our date slicer. The first date on the slicer is now January 1st. And um, the last date is, of course, today's date. You might not necessarily need to stretch all the way back um, to the beginning of the calendar table. Uh, for example, the data really on this uh, on this tab is only pertinent to the month of February. So we can uh, we'll add uh, another filter here. February first, and we'll apply that filter. Perfect. So now we don't have uh, January dates in here. And you'll see as I make adjustments here that everything is updating. We now have a fully functional date slicer <clears throat> that um, all of the visuals here are updating based on the selection. So, uh, you know, if we wanted to see, uh, if a stakeholder wanted to see, for example, uh, sales only after this February 5th campaign, they could come in here and change the date slicer and they would see the marketing campaigns data table update and this sales tracker table down here update as well. And also the KPI cards over here to the side. So uh, we've got the functionality that we were looking for. All right, so thanks again for tuning in to this uh, quick video on creating a universal calendar table in Power BI just by using DAX. Hopefully you found this tutorial helpful and you can apply it in your own work. Uh, feel free to leave a like down below. Make sure you click the subscribe button to stay up to date on our future videos. As always, if you have any questions or suggestions on future tutorials that we can help you with, please let us know in the comments and thank you for watching.